come to die. He knew that the cross was his destiny. So why say, Father, forgive them? Christ was an accent for forgiveness, for the act of his crucifixion. But for the reasoning and the motive for which it was done. The church and the religious leaders at that time were steeped in tradition. When the ministry of Christ was birthed, it broke every traditional law. Christ came to demonstrate like that. the true meaning of the law and Christianity. And because of this, they became angry and offended. And they believed that Jesus was a threat of God. They be sorry. They believed that Christ was a threat to the laws of God and considered him a blasphemer. And at that time, the penalty for blasphemy was death. I heard a story about a lady. Whenever she baked ham, she would cut it and throw one half away. Her husband asked, honey, why do you always do that? She told him it was the way her mother and grandmother did it to make the ham taste really good. So, the lady husband asked her grandmother about this family tradition. Her grandmother told him the reason she simply did that was because her part wasn't big enough to fit the whole arm. So, how we see a lady fly, thinking that when she cut the arm in half and throw it away, that was the key to good taste in half. But the true reason was grandma, great grandma, cut the part a bigger part. So, here we see that this is a perfect example of how religion and tradition can have us lost and blinded to the truth. Christ's request to God for forgiveness on the behalf of the people was because they were blind and lost to who he really was. This also shows the position in heaven today. Christ, this also shows Christ position in heaven today. The advocate that pleads on behalf of the children of God. In conclusion, Christ wasn't seeking forgiveness for his crucifixion, but for the motive and the traditional intent behind it. I want to encourage you to forgive somebody, even though you don't feel like they deserve it. Father, forgive them, because they do not know what they are doing. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Cassius. At this time, I'll ask Sister Dante to be as well. Woman, behold thy son. And uh, this would be presented to you by Sister Dante. Thank you. Just Amen. Amen. Following this is Thank you. So, what up to my finger? Following this is Dunkley. Oh, yeah, yeah. It will be in celebration by a dance. Okay. I think this is the uh, young girls, I believe. But we will be celebrated by a dance. Woman, behold thy son. The text is taken from St. John, chapter 19, verses 26 to 27. And it reads, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took 
Oh no, I have to do this. So at this point, we can stop the show. Several things. We know that Jesus' mother, Mary, along with his sister, Mary, and Mary Magdalene were standing at the cross of Jesus. And we can assume, assume that they all bore witness to Jesus being beaten, whipped, and crucified by the Roman soldiers. They have witnessed the soldiers cast lot, lots for Jesus' garment in direct fulfillment of the scripture. And let's put this in context. Mary specifically has just witnessed her son being beaten, whipped, the nails piercing to his hands, the nails piercing to his feet. So all the mothers in here, you can imagine your son or your child when they are in extreme pain. So imagine that Mary is in this position, front row and center, watching her son being crucified in front of all to see. Jesus might have been the Messiah for all of us, but Jesus was Mary's son first. So we have to take that into consideration, that Jesus was Mary's son first. So at this point, Jesus sees his mother and performs his last act as a filial son. He lovingly turns his mother over to his disciples by uttering the words, Woman, behold thy son. And as Jesus is dying, he is transferring his responsibility as a son over to his disciple, thus severing the ties between mother and son, because now he knows he is about to complete his heavenly father's business. So Jesus, some people might say Jesus referred to his mother as woman, uh, the sign of disrespect, but it was to show utmost respect and to show the severance of the ties. So the question can be asked, why would Jesus utter these words? The Bible never, met, never describes Jesus or his family as a rich man. He might be royal, holy, I mean, rich in heaven, but he was not rich on earth. So we can, we can also assume that Mary was a widow at this time. So therefore, Jesus saw into the future and decided to take care of his mother's physical needs by ensuring that she would have the protection of a son. So he transfers that protection over.